Hello everyone. Today I'd like to um, tell you about a couple strategies that are being used to take America down right now and if we pay attention to them and understand what they are if you pay attention watch the whole video you'll see what I'm talking about and I'm going to give you some examples that you may not have even known of laws that have been signed into effect just recently and how this has played out so please stick around and watch the whole video first of all this strategy both of these strategies are based on ordo ab kea, order out of chaos okay this is morals and dogma this is basically the Freemasons Bible okay um, I'll give you some more examples here here's the rosy cross Knights Templars okay ordo ab kea, order out of chaos master mason ring okay which when you become a master Freemason I don't know if you recognize this after you become a ma master Freemason you can become a Muslim Shriner I've done a video on that and if you um, didn't know that they're all interconnected well then watch the video and you'll understand it okay moving right along what I want to tell you about first of all is the Cloward and Piven strategy it is a strategy developed by Francis Fox Piven and Richard Cloward okay in 1966 Francis Fox Piven uh, was writing for the Nation magazine which in fact she still writes for today and she placed an article in the Nation magazine and it was called the weight of the poor a strategy to end poverty what it was was a mass strategy to recruit the poor onto welfare rolls which would create a political crisis that could result in legislation that brings an end to poverty meaning they wanted a guaranteed income for all they were staunch communists it almost it took them 10 years but it almost broke um, New York State anyway uh, let me give you some examples of that I just wanted to point this out as well is that Francis Fox Piven she reposted this article in 2010 because she was so proud of the fact that Barack Hussein himself was using her strategy and here are some of the strategies he's using I'm sure you could think of many more we have the Obama phone that's using to break America financially and um, then you have the illegal immigrants and they're getting approximately 10, 10 grand a year in benefits okay that's to financially break us and um, they're, they're totally trying to break down our system so we have that that was the the Cloward and Piven strategy now the next strategy is a very important strategy it's called the Hegelian dialectic okay and it's a tool that's being used today and this is the really really important one um, it's kinda complicated but once you get it you'll be able to spot it from a mile away anyway it's named after George Hegel and he was a philosopher in the 1800s German one and he used the Ordab, Ordo Ab Kea, Order Out of Chaos, okay. I believe he was a luminist, Illuminati. And um, what it is basically is a problem reaction solution. But this problem reaction solution is used to control the masses. Masses meaning a nation or a group of people, okay. So what it is, it's a created problem reaction and solution that a government creates in order to control and make laws that people would normally never ever ever go for okay I'm going to give you a couple examples of this and um, you'll understand after you see the examples anyway what we're going to do right here is this tells you how to recognize the three steps a catastrophe that makes big news 
Okay, now this catastrophe can be either created, manufactured, or, or it can be played upon by a real catastrophe and then the news blows it up. I'll give you an example. Here's, um, you never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. I think America... There's Rahm Emanuel. You never want a good crisis to go to waste. Okay? So, back to the um, problem, reaction, solution, Hegelian dialectic. A catastrophe that makes big news, if it's not created, well then it's blown up. Okay? Because you never want to let a good crisis go to waste. The reaction is repetitive coverage on the news because keep in mind the media is bought and paid for and owned by six corporation so they control what goes into our heads every time you turn on that TV. So it's repetitive coverage invokes prolonged fear and then the solution, of course, is a new legislation, and it always ends up somehow giving more power to the government. Okay? Here's an example of the London riots. All right? And um, we're going to go down to the solution, but we'll get back to the solution. Okay, here's another article. Um, what it does is it keeps people afraid. They want you to be afraid. Now, in politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, you can bet it was planned that way. That's FDR, Franklin D. Roosevelt, which, by the way, was a 33rd degree Freemason and went on to be a Muslim Shriner. Okay? And keep in mind, we only know what they put into our heads. So now's the biggie. Now I'm going to give you a couple examples and this is recently and you're going to know all about them and you're going to be able to put together what happened. So here we have Occupy Wall Street. Occupy Wall Street began September 17, 2011. Now I do believe that Occupy Wall Street started out as a pretty good movement because basically we all know we got screwed and we all know we got screwed by Wall Street but but our government gave them the money, okay? Our government gave them the money, okay? So it was, we got screwed in the end, but it was both our government and Wall Street. So what happens is you have a movement, okay? What happens after you get a movement, you'll have agitators come in, paid by the way, paid agitators that come in and get college kids or even high school kids to agitate, agitate, agitate and get them out there protesting, okay, to make it seem more than what it is. Now, here's the proof. George Soros, um, here we go, backs Occupy Wall Street. Now, why in the world would he do that? Why would George Soros pay for Occupy Wall Street. It's it's outrageous. There's I can't think of a reason why he would do that. But looking back, now I know why he did it. And here's the reason. Is that President Obama, March 15th, 2012 here, signs an anti-protest bill into law. Yeah. Now, there it is. There's your prime example. Problem and George Soros took that problem and went crazy with it by giving it plenty of money and feeding it. Okay? And you know, you turned on the TV for yourself. I'm sure you remember. I know I do. I could not turn anything without hearing Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street constantly. Okay, so anyway, March 15th, 2012, didn't take him long because 
Barack Obama jumped right on this. President Obama signed Bill H.R. 347, also known as the Federal Restricted Buildings and Grounds Improvement Act of 2011, into law on March 9th amid numerous protests from the Occupy movement as well as other agencies. H.R. 347 is a modification from Senate Bill S. 1794, which restricted people from entering or blocking public areas that have been closed off by Secret Service while a person under the protection is passing through. The law also included major public events such as inauguration and presidential campaigns. The new law, which passed the House with a vote of 399 to 3. Now I know we had a um, majority of Democratic in, Democrats in the House, but you know what? 399 of them? I don't think so. So looks to me like the republicans or democrats most of them are all on the same team another hegelian dialectic being played out before our eyes so the new law which passed the house with a vote of 399 to 3 extends the original law by adding more protected areas within washington dc and removing the word willfully from the paragraph stating that protesters can be prosecuted if they enter the area knowingly. Okay? Now, here's a copy of the bill. I'm going to leave this in the bottom. It is a pretty short bill. Um, curiously enough, I can't believe that. With Barack Obama in it, you never know. Usually he has thousands of pages in a bill. But anyway, moving on to the next one. Um, no, not that one. Here we go. Now, this is hard proof of crisis actors in Baltimore. Okay. Now, I don't know if you know this, but you should, that Baltimore and Ferguson, they had the same crisis actors, the same ones. Okay. And it was a lot of staging going on there. So, um, here's the pictures. I'll leave the article in the bottom. Why would they be staging this? Why would this happen? Why would they be shipping people from the Ferguson protest up to Baltimore? Because you you heard about, I don't know if you heard, but I know that I heard people on video in the Baltimore protest saying these are the same people from Ferguson. These people don't belong here. They're not from here. They are not from here. So you have that and and keep in mind i am not saying that this freddie gray thing or anything like that was um not real because i'm sure it was but they never let a crisis go to waste ever okay so what what turned out from that obama signed a bill named for slain nypd cops now i don't know if you remember but I certainly do because I was shocked at the language that Barack Obama used against the cops. He was pretty much inciting violence. Well, now we know why. The end result of this Ferguson Baltimore thing, I'm telling you, is to federalize the police force. And this Hegelian dialectic thing, it's more than just once and done. No, no, no. The Hegelian dialectic is used over and over and over and over again until they get what they want. Barack Obama's end game, what he wants is the end, in the end is more than a federalized police force. He wants the UN to police us because this is all about the one world government. This is going to be in the end and it may take years coming down the road. They are patient and they are very methodical and they know what they're doing. In the end, we're going to have a UN police force. That's what his goal is. Now, this bill seems pretty, pretty good on the surface, honestly, because these officers shot in action I feel awful for their families it's it's a shame it's very sad but these politicians use this and I'm gonna show you how let's see where is it oh it's down here it's this PDF so I'm reading over this bill okay now 
it's a good bill. It really is. But I kind of knew if I read through it, I'd find something nefarious that connects other agencies to this to make this police force federalized. And this is what's happened. Here we go. Section D, I'm not sure of the page. Let's see if I can find it. Page 11 it is. Section D, cooperation with other agencies. The coordinator shall cooperate with the Secretary of Homeland Security, the Secretary of Transportation, and the Chairman of the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, and appropriate offices of the Department of Justice in carrying activities under this Act. Now, why would the FCC be involved, the Federal Communication Commission? See, my assumption, and this is an assumption, is they're going to start policing the internet because I did read in there if um, something is said threatening towards a police officer. Now, I understand that and I would not want to be threatened, but I'm telling you, I know these bills, I'm seeing these crazy bills being passed like the NDAA 2012, which by the way was carried over in uh, 2013, 20. 14 and subsequently in 2015 which just takes our rights totally away and if you don't want if you don't know what the NDAA 2012 indefinite detention is then you really should you really should because our uh, right a trial uh, right to a trial is, is gone they can lock us up it's indefinite detention anyway back to this um, thing here. They are giving a lot of power to Homeland Security, Secretary of Transportation. Really? Why would the Secretary of Transportation need to know this? Chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, the DOJ. Really? Why do these all these people need to have all this so you may want to if you have time I'll leave the link below to check that out as well so um, let's see here is another I wanted to show you this this is awesome if I can find it um, gosh darn it did I have it in here here it is this um, mad as hell website this goes through all the crisis actors. He has plenty of videos. It's a compilation of them showing you the crisis actors and the crap that's being played upon us. Okay? And this all plays into the Hegelian dialectic to make more strict laws. And once you see this for what it is, you'll 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 think, oh my gosh, why are they doing this? What's the end game? And you're going to know. So let's go back to this um, this article with solutions. How do we stop it? Well, all three steps are absolutely necessary or the Hegelian dialectic falls apart. We don't do much about the problem or the solution after the fact. However, the reaction is us. All we have to do is stop reacting the way they want us to. Stop playing along with their script. Once we realize that it was all planned out ahead of time, including our reaction in our programmed ignorance, it's easy to stop participating. When enough people become aware and stop participating in the sinister agenda, the house of cards will come crashing down. Worldwide, people are waking up and this, to this and are taking action. There are are many many global organization and groups of many kinds that have some or all of these three goals get the world word out to as many as possible to what is really happening bring down the global cabal that has perpetrated this global destruction of freedom prosperity and peace this financial and police and military tyranny and have a replacement starter system ready for when the house of cards does come crashing down because believe you me they have a, a, a program in place for when it comes crashing down and they are 
they're the ones who are making it come down so it will come down trust me it will and we have to get together and think about how we're going to rebuild it without the cabal involved i don't know how that's going to happen but there are a lot of intelligent people out there in this world that are not in the cabal and we can do it well anyway i just wanted to uh let you in on that i hope you got a lot out of this and if you did i'd like for you to pass this along subscribe and like my video and there'll be a lot more to come and if you turn off your tv if we all turn off our tvs we can do this together we can we can fight what's going on together well thanks for watching and you have a great day